G'day guys and welcome to this week's tech video. Today I'm going to show you how to connect up one of these Autometer electronic speedo drives into your Microtech 5 inch or 7 inch Pro Dash and I'll also run through what needs to be set up in the Dash software itself to get it all working and also to calibrate it. There are a few other different brand speedo drives available but these are by far the most common ones. They're very easy to wire in and get working so for today's demo, I'm going to stick with this one. When you buy a Microtech 5 inch or a 7 inch Pro Dash, they come with one of these GPS receivers included in the kit. The receiver just plugs straight into the back of the dash and they work an absolute treat for getting you road speed and they're the most accurate way of getting road speed. However, there's quite a few engineers in Australia that won't engineer the early model car if it's using the GPS only for the road speed. Reason for that is if the car's in a tunnel or an underground car park where there's no satellite signal, the speedo doesn't work, the odometer doesn't work, so they require the speedo is being driven off the wheels or the gearbox or the drive shaft or the movement of the wheel of some description. So that's where one of these suckers comes in. The drive unit itself, it just screws straight onto the side of the gearbox and then you've got this little dick thing, it slots in to the drive unit and it goes into the gearbox where the original speedo cable used to go and that's what drives the unit. Then when the car starts moving this just sends a pulse signal straight to the dash. Autometer do make a few different models of these uh, that have a different size thread. This one here I've got is 7 8 um, this is also the same thread that Mazda use on all their gearboxes and the early Toyota Supra boxes, the W57 and W58, they use the same thread as well. So for what I do, this one covers most bases. Here in Australia, you can buy these from Rocket Industries in Sydney. If you want to get yourself one, this is the part number that you need to ask them for. I'll also put a link to this part number down in the description below. Wiring them up is really easy. You've only got three wires that need to be connected up. Red goes to ignition on 12 volt. Black goes to ground. That can go to chassis ground or the body of the car. Then the white wire, that's the signal wire. That goes back to the Microtech dash. When you wire it to the dash, you need to wire it into RPM input number two, which is the green wire. If you need the diagram, you can download that from the Microtech EFI website. Once you've got it wired in, there are a few things in the Dash software that need to be set up before it will work. The first thing that you've got to do is check which version firmware you've got on the Dash. You're going to need version 2.6 or later. The firmware version flashes up on the screen when you first turn the Dash on. If you've got an earlier model Dash, you will need to send it back in to have the firmware updated. If you do need to get the firmware updated, I'll put a link in the description below on how to do that. When you're setting up the Dash, first thing you need to do is make sure you have kilometres or miles per hour selected as the main function on the dash screen. To get to that, touch up in the top left corner of the dash to go into handset mode. Come down to the first screen which is page one. Arrow across to screen number six and make sure it's selected with kilometres per hour. We'll use kilometres per hour for this demo. Once that's done, back to the dash and you'll have kilometers per hour selected in the center here. Once that's done we need to go back into handset mode and we need to scroll down to page 12 which is the auxiliary channel setup screen and we go across to page 10 or screen 10 RPM input to teeth this is where we put the number of teeth that the autometer sender unit has, which is two. Across to the right, one more click. You need to put in the diff ratio of the car. So for this example, I'll use 4.8. Then one more setting is the tyre size. The tyre size is measured from the ground to the height of the tyre. So from grab a tape measure, just measure straight to the top of the tyre. Uh, for this demo, we'll put in 60 centimetres, should be pretty close. And that should be it. Once you've got all those settings in, 
And if I've managed to get all the wires in the right spot, if I spin the speedo drive in the drill, we should start to see the speed come up here on the dash. The last thing left to do now is to calibrate it. The best way to do that is on the dyno. You just need to go to that tyre height setting size, adjust that up and down until the speed on the dash matches the speed on the dyno. If you don't have access to a dyno, there is another way that you can do it just using the dash that will get you pretty close as well. If you touch the screen in the bottom left hand corner, it will bring up the dash info screen. And once you're there, arrow down two clicks and then you get to the dash function screen here. Now what this screen does, it shows all the sensor inputs on the screen at the same time. And what you want to look for is the kilometre per hour value which is being read from the gearbox sensor. That's up here, function number four. And the GPS kilometre per hour which is over here, which is function 24. This one here is going to be reading the speed from the GPS sensor and what you can do is keep an eye on what the GPS kilometres per hour is and go back over here and adjust the tyre height size that we spoke about earlier. Adjust that up and down until both of them match each other and once you've done that the speedo will be pretty close to being calibrated and you should be all done and good to go. Thanks guys for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. I'll see you again soon with some more Microtech Tech videos.